Hi there, how you doing? Um, thought I'd share uh, what I've been up to uh, during the quarantine. Um, it's been about three or four weeks, so I'm going a little stir crazy. I think a lot of folks out there are. So I thought I'd share what I've been up to. Um, start a conversation perhaps on uh, YouTube. Uh, last time I posted a video was back in 2014, so it's been a while. Uh, picked up a full-time job, just kind of never got around back to painting the full stuff that I was doing before. So I figured now I got a little bit of time, I'll pull out some of the equipment, uh, reset up a little studio and start painting again. So I'll show you what I've been up to. Um, right now I am in the process of gessoing a uh, canvas. Now I'm repurposing one right now. So in other words, this one already had a painting on it and I thought, okay, well, I wasn't that satisfied with it. So essentially I'm just doing a primer and a gesso coat to bring it back up to something that I can use. Now the reason I'm doing this is I didn't feel like stretching a new canvas and uh, to be honest with you, buying supplies right now is a little difficult. So this is just the way of doing it while I'm in house. Um, so uh, again, keeps me from going crazy. I also put together this little, uh, I guess, wall stand. So if you notice, I've used two by fours, they're just pine and I put a little header up at the top. So I've got two screws that tie into the header in the wall. So it holds it in position. Up top, I've got my old camera gear. Uh, I just thought it was a convenient spot to put a shelf. Then I've gone with uh, one by twos on the pine, uh, and that essentially just gives it a little structure. Also allows me the ability to to clamp down or to hold the canvases in place behind it, if you can see there. So it gives me an attachment point to it. So kind of nice little feature there. Uh, down below, I've also added in a little shelf. So again, this is the spot where I keep paints and my mixes. Uh, so uh, once I start painting, usually I'll have three or four different things on the go. Um, again, I'll probably end up doing a uh, little animation short. Uh, I'll put a camera off to the side of the, the wall there and shoot as I'm doing it. And that's what I did in the past and it seems to be pretty popular as far as viewing is concerned. Down here, I've got some of my other work. So I kind of give you a little idea there. I'm using a selfie stick and uh, a jittery camera, so I do apologize for that. Uh, so again, whenever I go out, uh, I always pick up uh, things out of a state sale or a thrift shop, and uh, I'll put my work into a nice frame. The reason I do that is, um, well, it presents better. Uh, sometimes I give them away as gifts. Every once in a while, one will sell, but to be honest with you, I don't really sell my work that much, uh, just the nature of it. Off to the side, again, I've got more frames, more gear. Again, just stuff that I've collected over the years. Um, again, it's just one of those things that I do. Uh, kind of a little squirrely. I guess I'm a bit of a pack rat on that one. Up top, this is my last one. So I did a train. Now this one I've done maybe four times. So kind of funny thing on this one is um, I do decor pieces. So uh, a lot of times I'll get a a message saying, hey, I'm putting it together a coffee shop. I need something kind of cool for the area. So it um, seems to be an awful lot of uh, trains. I don't know why. It's just weird the way that works out. Uh, one I've been almost finishing off, and I've been doing this one for a while. This one's almost come up to three years on it. It's kind of one of those little things where I stop and go, stop and go. So it's a mix of uh, acrylic. Uh, I've got a little watercolor in it. I've got uh, a little bit of ink as well. So again, I don't really stay to one medium. I'll end up going all over the place, mainly because I'm not getting paid for it. I can pretty much do whatever I want, which is kind of nice when you have a hobby. Off to the side, I got myself my little uh, stereo setup, which uh, I listen to the local radio on. I know it's not uh, anything fancy, but it just keeps me going. So then I've got the frame for that uh, canvas that I'm in the middle of gessoing. So it's uh, sitting on the wall there just as a reminder to say, hey, get, get going and paint something. Now, uh, down below on my couch, uh, I keep it as a storage area. So I've got some blank smaller canvases down below. I've got uh, some paper if I do watercolors. So again, I use that as kind of as a storage unit and a couch. So I was kind of hoping to actually turn it into something where I could open up the, the midsection and put a swiveling door so I could actually use it as a, a spot to actually rest things in. And uh, that might be a project I might actually make a YouTube video on because uh, I'm going to have some time. So uh, that might be a project in the future. This is my desk, and I'm kind of a little proud of this one. Uh, it took me a while to find it. So this is a desk out of um, an art school in Hamilton that I found in Barrie, listed on Kijiji. So um, 
it's kind of cool um, when I picked it up on the back side if you take a look here and I do apologize I'm using a selfie stick so my shots are a little off it's got a kind of a plank board design to it and it's neat because it's got all sorts of little signatures and marks from uh, previous artists as they were doing their thing um, little etchings and little mixes of paint I didn't want to refinish it because uh, in the future what I want to do is pull it apart I want to seal it with um, probably a polyurethane or something on that line uh, and kind of make it into a piece unto itself uh, and maybe use it as a working piece because I just thought it was pretty cool so in the meantime what I did is I went picked up a, a scrap board from one of the local hardware stores and uh, just had them cut it to fit um, nailed her in nothing nothing too fancy uh, I like this because in the event that I scratch it or scuff it or mark it or mar it I don't care uh, I can pull it off sand it uh, throw another coat on or I can leave it alone um, and just replace it it's not expensive to redo I put a little baseboard piece down below just basically to tie things in so I can actually put a canvas down up top on the lamp which I thought was kind of a cool little thing to do if we take a look here I've got a little camera set up so uh, what I do is as I'm painting or as I'm doing work I will um, set it up to randomly take shots so usually it's about every 15 seconds uh, and then I can kind of filter it through and I do a little animation of the work that I've done and I'll post that with something that I might be selling or um, sometimes I've got a couple up here on uh, YouTube um, they had actually get more views than the actual work itself so it's kind of a cool little item to do and I've got a full spectrum light which uh, I'd like to give you a show here so again I do apologize for the selfie stick um, this one I got from my mother but uh, you can pick them up off of uh, Amazon eBay um, they're very good for painting um, they're meant for seasonal depression um, and they kind of work from that standpoint but what I find is it's really good for seeing the colors with the acrylics when I'm in an apartment setting so in other words I've got one window uh, sometimes I'm working at night I'll put this on along with the regular lights and I get a nice clean light out of it uh, it allows me to get um, an accurate mix of red or yellow it gives me an idea of what it'll look like when it's actually finished which is kind of a nice little item and again not horribly expensive uh, so one of those things that uh, if you do something in the house or you're doing something in an apartment or you set yourself up a little uh, space in the basement pick up one of these because they're pretty handy Now down below, um, which I thought was kind of neat, so I've got a little tray that hooks up here. So if I want to take the, uh, the easel out, I've got a spot where I can put my paints and do my work. Down below, I've built a little storage area for unused frames. And what I've done is every time I find a frame that I kind of like, um, I may not necessarily have a work completed for it, or I may not have um, an idea for it. But if they're affordable at the time, I grab them. Again, that's being a bit of a pack rat. Plus, I can also refinish them, and I'll do that a lot with my frames. So um, a quick little Brillo pad, a little bit of oil sometimes brings them right up to brand new. The other one that I'll do is sometimes I'll sand them down, or I'll use a paint thinner, and I'll just refinish them completely. The uh, nice thing is they are traditionally a really easy item to do, and they're kind of fun to do to match up with the work that I've done. So if I've done something with a, a lot of reds in it or a heavy blue theme, or there's something that I want to tie in with it sometimes I'll do the framework to match the painting um, and I think that even adds a little bit to it so sometimes finding the right frame to go with the work or working with the frame it's kind of the approach I take got one of my G5s down here so this is a, an older unit and again I use it for uh, grabbing photos or things that I'm working on and it's a little overkill for what it is but uh, I'll show you later I've got a pretty big collection of these um, and I'll just run through that in another video off to the side here I've got a little rolling cart and uh, this is something I would recommend as well if you're out there uh, shopping and you want to put together a little area to paint um, this is typically out of a bed and bathrooms uh, area so I think I picked this one up at a thrift store but I don't remember it's quite a few years old and I put all of the mixes of everything that I can kind of use so I've got my little trays that I use for mixing paints um, yes I do like using plates I find them to be actually quite handy I don't use fine china but uh, they're pretty good for doing up the mixes and they wash up easily I also got the uh, little mixing trays from the dollar store which 
strangely enough, work really well. So if you're out there looking for something along that line, um, don't let the price point kind of deter you. They do work well. Down below, I've got my little mix of acrylics. So again, kind of tricky camera stuff, but these little guys I pick up all the time. Uh, usually they're at Michael's. Um, they're a few dollars for uh, usually a, a box of six. So I recommend those a lot. And then down below, I've got just about every dollar store acrylic I could find. And I was using the higher end stuff from Michael's. What I find is these are a little cheaper. Um, so I like that. Um, the Michael stuff, you got to watch the expiry date, which sounds crazy for paints. But if you get something that's uh, close to that date, they go thick and gooey and they kind of have a little bit of residue or something in them. Whereas the dollar store stuff, because they rotate out so fast, uh, you don't have that problem. Now, I do find that there are issues with some of the, the tones. They don't stay consistent. So what I've done is I've always just kept a little bottle of the, the better acrylics and I'll mix the two sometimes. Then we'll bring the blue up to be a little bluer or bring the red up to be a little more of a red. I find the issue is with blue predominantly with the dollar store stuff. Reds are usually pretty good. Um, sometimes the yellows go a little weird, but that's not too common. Um, other things that I've got are the brushes. And uh, what I recommend is the dollar store brushes. I know, again, it sounds cheap. And it is a little bit, but you'll get 12 in these. And I found that the three are usually throwaways. So usually they fall apart or they're just junk. But you get nine that are pretty decent. Now, when it comes to brushes, you can only recycle them so many times before they start to fall apart anyway. So even if you spend a premium on brushes, they don't really stay the way they, they have to. So buying the ones from the dollar store, if I can get through two or three paintings with them, great. If not, I should go pick up another set. Um, I also like trimming them, which is, I know sounds strange, but I'll take, these are pretty squared off, but sometimes I'll do them up on a 45 or I'll hang them all out so they get a little bit of an arrow to them. I find they're really good for doing, um, I guess what you do, little little branches off trees or the finished work in a flower. Uh, it allows you to kind of reshape the brush without being too concerned about, you know, I've just destroyed a great brush. Yeah, no big deal on that. This is another one I've been working on. So uh, I like the frame. I've been doing some pastel work. Pastels are another one I would actually suggest. So if you're gonna go out and try pastels, because it's kind of my first time doing them, uh, again, go with the dollar store ones. I've tried using the, the professional series at, uh, again, Michael's and the, the bigger stores. I find for the cost and for the amount of time you use them, um, go with the cheaper ones first. If you can master these and work well with this stuff, moving up to a professional grade, the density of it is a little different. Um, it applies better. But this is great for just trying out and seeing, okay, do I like using oil pastels? Uh, again, you're looking at a couple dollars for 12 colors. You can play with it. Um, you don't like how it turns out. Um, typically, if it's your first time, it's not because of the material. It's because of your skill set. So it's just a great way of kind of getting your skill set up and running before you actually invest in something bigger. So that's about what I've been up to. Um, so um, again, hope you're not going too crazy. Uh, but I thought I'd put this video to say, uh, you know, uh, you can do stuff around the house, keep yourself occupied. You know, uh, perhaps find that uh, something you've been putting off for a while, you wanted to give it a try. Uh, painting's a great way of kind of, I don't say killing time, but uh, maybe acquiring a new skill. Uh, I'm gonna do a couple more videos of some of the things that I've been doing around the house as far as hobbies are concerned. Again, just to kind of maybe say, you know, you don't have to go completely stir crazy. And uh, hopefully this helps you get through uh, the quarantine. Okay. Pleasant, enjoyable day.